Everything represents here. Um, that's that's where I want to start today. So I thought we'd do that by just um, introducing yourself and maybe saying why are you here today? Like, what do you hope to get out of this? We got 60 minutes. Um, the good part of this is if you're absolutely in the wrong place, I'll tell you that oh, you're probably not going to get anything here. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I would just love to hear like what brought you here today to the to the Innovate Conference. So uh, I'm going to start with you, sir, because you were on the front row. Like, um, I just wanted to learn. Uh, started back to college, around two for career. So you want to what? What's your name? Tell everybody. Uh, my name is Brady. Brady Cooper. Brady. All right. So Brady wanted to wanted to learn. I love it. Money? Um, I am. I just transferred from uh, Nichols, and I go to UL right now. But um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm starting a men's wear business. So I came here because really? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to be around, you know, people who understand the struggle too. Yes. My goodness. So connection is part of this right just tell me I'm not crazy exactly. <laughs> tell me you love me just a hug just somebody give me a hug hi I'm Karen uh, my business is so what um, we do embroidery screen printing limestone design um, I uh, from the last class I learned that I'm, I'm the visionary I guess and I'm not great at the integrator part so I'm here to try to learn more about how to actually run my business and not have it run me. Wow, that's great. How to run, not be run by. Yeah, it's there's a, that's a long one. Um, so go ahead and introduce them. What's that? Lauren. Lauren. And Lauren, why are you here? Well, I so much in the grow business, um, the telephone business. So to grow the business. Excellent. How about here in the front row? See, that's what happens when you sit in the front row. Like this. You are not backwards. I can tell right now. This is front row right here. Uh, so it's just tell her your name and just why are you here? Like what brought you here today to innovate, not necessarily do this class? All you can do. Well, my name is Calvin. Calvin. I am currently in the process of trying to obtain a patent on an idea um, for the past three years. So I'm trying to get more information on it. Trying to do it the right way, not really rushing to it. Yeah. Get some information if I can. Uh, get involved with some more resources. Maybe. That's awesome. And just network and hopefully it grows well for me. Welcome, Gal. And you? Oh, I was hoping you go that way. You just be like, I'm with, I'm with Calvin. <laughs> no. My name is Jada. I'm um, I basically came here with Calvin, and um, I had a few ideas that I was really have in mind, and I definitely want to find ways in which I can, I guess you could say, market them. Okay. So, and I'm here to network as well. So. Ideas, marketing. Hi, I'm Michaela. Um, I'm basically here the same reason as Jada, just looking to, for new information and meeting people. And I have some ideas too. Thank you about so. And I apologize, I'm trying to write really messy so that you can't see how badly I'm butchering your names. I can't see anyways. Yeah, that's, thank you, see? That's why I allowed you to sit up front, not further in the back. Um, over here. Introduce yourself to the group. We're small, so this is family. Sure, sure. I'm Marissa Collins, and I uh, work here at the Old Lafayette as a community college business, uh, Sarah Engagement and Outreach Officer, and I'm also, I have been working on the steering committee for Innovate. students, with faculty, with staff, um, across the board, and, oh, and I just really like to run with scissors. That's really why. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, and I'm Katie, and I'm with Delta Regional Authority, and we are here as the sponsor for the pitch competition that's happening later today, which shameless plug, hope you all attend. And um, I'm really interested to hear about the Heart Smarts Grit Grace. That's it. Well done. I might pull you up here. <laughs> and this group over here. <laughs> I am Glenn, and my wife, your mother, said I should be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> and I'm Frances, and I'm a chronic introvert, so I'm trying to be sociable today. 
Francis isn't from around here. <laughs> Francis is, is also one of my coaches and a great person to work alongside with. And yes, sir, you back here. My name is also Glenn. <laughs> I'm here because I'm intrigued about coaching in general and uh, very intrigued about it. The more I can learn about it, the more uh, I, I'm hungry for it. So that's why I'm here. I'm also married to Glenn's oldest daughter, so that, <laughs> that's, that's not, not the only reason that's I'm not, here. Well, thank you. Oh, man. There's going to be some serious repercussions of this up here. What's that? They sat on the bright side. Yes, you sat on the bright side. So here's what I want to do. Go ahead and pull up a little bit. Everybody back here. So Marissa, Kate, Lauren, y'all go ahead and pull up a little bit. Uh, and make sure everybody's got a pin. Yeah, that's it. Balance it out because we're going to team up. And so uh, thank you for going here, first of all, because this is important. What I want you to know today is this isn't about relevant coaching. It's not nearly as much about what I do. Is It's about you, right? You're here for a reason. You're, you're my heroes. I mean, it takes a lot to come out to an event like this. It's a sacrifice of time, energy. Uh, there's all kinds of things you could be doing, right? It, it, with your business, you're just like, man, is this the right thing? We have limited time and resources. We all have 24 hours in a day. Uh, I'm supposed to be an Opelousas at an event with my kids that, that was supposed to be last week and got moved to this week and you know you I didn't really get to choose but um I'm excited to be here first time pitch event uh, a little bit about me my name is Brian Reinhardt um, I'm here because I was asked by Pete Prados to be here and to speak to you guys and ask them you know what what do people want to hear I mean how can I add value to you because that's what I want to happen today at the end of this 60 minutes I hope that you you go out of this room and you feel like you've been filled somewhat, that you have some things that you can use right away. I'm very much about um, experiential knowledge, about being able to take what you're learning, and if you can't apply it right away, what good is it, right? Uh, we sit through some great stuff sometimes, uh, but when it comes to applying it to the real world and putting feet to it, if we can't, we just easily discard it. So this stuff really better matter, right? You give me an hour of your time, I don't take that lightly. So as we jump in, you know, we talked about here, and, and what's so important to me about here, and I've already lost my eraser, it won't be the first time, is that here is just part of your story. You know, my story began in New Orleans. I was born and raised in the New Orleans area. Uh, but then over time, it, it involved leaving home, going to Papua New Guinea and the Philippines and doing mission work for about eight years with an organization called New Tribes. I did culture study, language study, um, all of those things. Thought that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Um, I got so caught up in the doing part of it that I didn't take care of the health side of me and I crashed and burned. Came back home to Lafayette because that's where my family had moved. And while I was here I thought, you know, I, I have a passion and a value around learning. So I went back to UL. It was just a temporary thing. I was going to go for a few months. But then I met this amazing woman, uh, Glenn's daughter. And it's a dangerous thing when you start dating a Lafayette woman because we got married, we had we have three beautiful kids, and along the way I thought, well, what's next for me? Um, and I had to begin to look at what is it, what am I passionate about? What do I love doing? What could I do for the rest of my life? And, and really, really genuinely love. And two things came up for me. One, you know, I, I love God and I love people, and that's something my parents really poured into me. And I, I thought, but what does that look like stateside here? And uh, when I finished up my MBA at, at UO, a man approached me about this thing called coaching. And he said, I think you would be good at this. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never heard of such a thing. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I've never was much of an athlete growing up. He says, well, I want you to try it out. And I did, fell in love with it. And, uh, you know, to give you a sense of what coaching is, coaching is such a buzzword these days. But the, the simplest way I can explain coaching to you is uh, – a coach serves as a guide to help you get from here to there. A coach serves as a guide to help you get from here to there. And incidentally, if you have a product that you're trying to do, a patent, any of those things, what people are looking for is someone who will do the same with them. You know, does your product, does your organization, does your company, uh, do you help people get from here to there? Someone once said, uh, life is just a long walk home and we're walking together. We're all walking together home. And so there's something about, do we have people in our lives that can walk with us to get us from here to there? Most of you, if, if 
it's like my parents, a lot of the older generation, they grew up with more close friends, close connections, uh, mentors, people that poured into our life. But we live in a time and age where we're scattered. We're not oftentimes in our home states, right? We're elsewhere. Uh, these days, even if you want to date, who has the time to date, right? What do we do? Where do we go to date these days? Online, right? That's where you met your husband? Oh, so you married a... I married the cage man that could cook. <laughs> well done. You look remarkable. You have a great figure for marrying a guy that could cook. That's... Um, don't tell that to my pants. I <laughs> so, you know, so what I found is in this day and age, we have to be really, really intentional about finding that voice in our life. It's, it doesn't just happen anymore. We don't always have that family member or that close friend that's going to come alongside us because maybe they live a few states over or maybe they're busy too. We were so incredibly busy. And that's why you see more and more people taking on a coach, someone who could provide to them high challenge and high support. And the reason why is as human beings, we're, we're wired for two things. Two things that we're wired for. One of them is connection and one of them is challenge. We want to be known and loved, but we also want to know that the stuff we're doing matters, right? That it, that it all matters. Now, one of the hard parts of this is, on the one hand, I want you to accept me just as I am, but then I also want people in my life who see me where I am and won't leave me there, that they're going to push me to be more, a better man, a better husband, better father, a better, uh, a better entrepreneur, a better coach, all those things. I don't want to be average you know I, I feel like and, and maybe if you're here too you feel like life should matter this is we don't get a long shot at no one's guaranteed tomorrow you know that's one thing we see just from recent events yesterday there are no guarantees about tomorrow but we want to know that the days and the hours count that they matter right so uh what we're gonna do today is you've got a sheet in front of you and as you can tell it looks a lot like a coloring sheet. It's very simple, and that's, that's for a reason. Um, I really believe, I think it was Jim Collins that said, the essence of profound insight is simplicity. There's something about uh, a little graph here, and I'll put down here simplicity, and over here, effectiveness. And the way this line goes is here. You know, as a coach, my job is to make sure that you're becoming more and more effective while also simplifying your life. Because we've known what it's been like to be here. Have any of you been here, incredibly effective, but about to pull your hair out and just other things are suffering, right? Other things begin to suffer. And then there's, you know, there's simplicity. I think maybe Jimmy Buffett, this is like somewhere in Cancun right now. But, but what are we thinking as we're, as we're sipping margaritas in a, in a hammock in Cancun, in the back of our mind, what's starting to pile up? Work. Work, right? All that stuff. And so out comes the phone and things like that. But if we're doing it right, this is what it should look like. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a couple of tools today. I'm going to tell some stories. I, I love to use story. I love to use visuals. I love to get your right and your left brain going. Um, might have you actually talk to each other. So look around, find the most intelligent person around you, and then you, you pick them as a partner. <clears throat> just be prepared to explain it to everyone else. So we're going to start with um, what you see there, heart, smart, spirit, and grace. And why did I pick these today? Well, one reason is these are the core values of Relevant. This is something that's, that's guided me through the ups and downs of life, and it's, it's allowed me to be um, successful, I feel like, personally and professionally. Uh, we've seen uh, so much come out of this for me, and, and it's a way to keep coming back to what's important. So I want to talk about this idea of heart first. What, what does it mean to have heart? Someone talked to me about what does it mean to have heart? That you care about things. That you care about things, yes. What else? Integrity. Integrity. Fully engaged. Fully engaged, right? There's something about, um, this is about being wholehearted, right? Living with your whole heart. Have you ever worked a job where you felt like your heart just wasn't in it? 
Is that wholehearted? It's not, right? I had a friend yesterday, and we were talking about another friend who just sold their company for $22 million. Um, and he's like, man, what would you do if you had $22 million? And I'm like, I do what I'm doing right now. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I, I love what I'm doing. I'd have to find something to do with that, but I'm sure my wife could or other, you know, someone could do it, but I'd keep doing what I do. I love it. And, uh, and so we got to have that discussion. I mean, what does it mean to have heart? So I wanted to tell you a story about someone who had heart, and his name was David Rabin, Dr. David Rabin. David Rabin was uh, a professor of medicine at Vanderbilt University. And while he was studying at Vanderbilt, there was one disease in particular that was the most fearsome disease he studied. It was ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He remembers once a neurologist looking at this person with ALS and pronouncing hopeless. This person will be demeaned, isolated, unable to communicate, and probably dead within six months. At age 46, David was diagnosed with ALS. He knew what would happen. He would begin to feel numbness in his, in his feet and then in his legs, his arms, and extremities until finally he would not even be able to move his tongue. As it began to set in, uh, he could no longer treat patients, write books. He would have had a brilliant uh, teaching career and he could no longer turn the page of a book. Uh, it was looking more and more hopeless until one day a friend came to him and said, David, I heard about a computer that will allow you to, to do things on the computer as long as you retain the use of one muscle. As long as you have one muscle left in your body, you can use this computer. Well, let me tell you what, by that time, David Rabin had lost the ability to use every muscle in his body except one, his eyebrow. That's the only thing he could twitch was his eyebrow in demand. But you know what he hadn't lost? He hasn't lost heart. You know, I would like to think I wouldn't just, just kind of like quit at that point. He didn't. Even when he's down to one eyebrow, that's it. He didn't lose heart. And so they hooked up that computer to his eyebrow. And you know what happened? An amazing thing happened. He began to teach again. He, began to, he created an entire series on endocrinology, an entire series of books on endocrinology. He taught classes. He practiced medicine. He wrote letters to his, his wife, his children. Um, he won some prestigious awards for his academic excellence and everything he poured into it. And, uh, you know, somehow I ended up here without my phone. But I'll, I'll pull up this because I want to I wanna read this quote to you by Rabin. Um, I'll just paraphrase it. When, one of the last things he told his students is he says, you are not your abilities. You are more than your job. You are more than what people say you are. You're more than all those things. He says, it's what's inside that counts. It's what's in your heart. David Rabin had one eyebrow, and it was enough to change the world. How about us? How about us? So what I want us to do is look at what is it that we're passionate about? What's important to you? So take out your pen and your paper, and we're going to break this thing down a little bit. And I'll show you how. You see that heart there? I want you to take it and put a line through it like this and like this. So you make a cross in it. Let me do that. And then finish it off like a, like a piece of pie. So you're going to have eight sections. Eight sections right there. And over here, I want you to put high connection. And over here, high challenge. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to label. I just want you to think about this is your life, essentially, right here. This is your heart. On this side, I want you to put down what are some of the roles, some of the people that you have relationships with or you connect. So I'm going to give you an example. My wife is, is right here. My kids. It might be... Um, uh, so my coworkers, my, my other coaches, and then I'll tell you a big one lately for me. This is going to sound incredibly self-serving, but even myself, there's something about learning to connect well with who you are. You can put whatever you want in there. It could be boyfriend, girlfriend. It could be parents, brothers, sisters. 
it could be friends, whatever it is, but I want you to write down some of the connections that you have there. On the other side of this chart, it's going to be areas such as, and, and I'll give you some examples, things that, <clears throat> things that need to be challenged. So for me, it's physically. You can put physical. Um, I'm going to put intellectual. <coughs> I'm going to put my job. And uh, I'm going to put down here my goals. Right? So these are the things that I look to sometimes for high challenge. Again, you can choose different ones, but I want you to write it down. Now, you're going to have to show your work to each other, so I know some of you are waiting this out. Um, so write it down, because about to, you're about to score yourself on these areas. Give you a few seconds to finish those out. done that, this is the next step. I now want you to score yourself with the center of the heart here being zero and the, the outside edge here being a 10. So on a scale of, let's say one to 10, I want you to rate yourself in each of these in terms of how are you doing? So I'll, I'll give you an example. So a zero, uh, let's say a one is I'm so bad at connection with my wife that she needs counseling. Like it's, it's damaging actually to her. She needs to get out of this relationship. A 10 being um, I'm everything she's hoped and dreamed of. I mean, I am <laughs> the epitome of all of that it means to be a husband. And, uh, and that she's currently writing a book about just how incredible I am. Right? So spoiler alert, I'm in between there somewhere. So I'm, and this is as of today, right? I don't want your highlight reel, like, oh, I had a great day. Uh, this is as of today. So as of today, I'm gonna put, um, I'm at an eight, which is a remarkably high score for me, by the way. I should get here. Uh, you know, with my kids, I'm gonna put a five. And I'll kind of put this line here to be able to show where I'm going. With my coaches, um, at about five. And with myself, um, I'm actually at, a, at about a six right there. Does that make sense? They're your scores. No one's going to argue with you, right? You're, you're the one giving you these scores. And now I want you to come over to the physical side and, and ask yourself, how, how much am I challenged in these areas currently? Like, how challenged do you feel? Um, so, again, physical, at, at a 10 there, I'm, like, uh, going to go try out for fittest person alive, you know, whatever, CrossFit. Uh, a one being, you're probably in a coma, but or I'm just eating so much pizza and beer that it's, it, it won't take long before I'm gone. So somewhere in there, same thing intellectually. How challenged are you intellectually? For some of you, if you're a student, you're like, oh my gosh, I, it's just dumped, it's just getting dumped on. For others, it's like, man, I'm not, I haven't grown in a long time. I'm, I'm right where I was last year. Um, maybe it's your job. Is your job challenging it? Or are you just mailing it in? Do you feel like if you walked away, it would take like three days for them to realize you were gone? You're probably <laughs> low challenged. <laughs> and then your goals. Let me ask you this. If, if you're at a 10, like your goals take your breath away. Like they make you tremble because they're so big. Um, as a matter of fact, they're probably so big people are trying to talk you out of them. Are you at like a one where... Uh, it's, you know, one's probably like a magic eight ball. <laughs> it's like, what should I do today? Really low. So I'm going to put here uh, eight physical, intellectual, eight job, eight my goals. Put a uh, six. Yeah. Actually, these are much higher scores than normal. Some, some of the people that know me in here are like, wow, Brian, what that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, put your scores down, and then here's what we're going to do. I want, I'm, I want you to turn to someone next to you, and, um, you know, if you haven't 
written them down, you can do them in your head because this is your life, you know it. I just want you to speak to one. I want you to pick one of these areas and say, uh, let's say one that you're doing well in and one that you're not doing so great in. I just want you to say, hey, here's the score I gave myself in ABC and here's why I feel like I'm doing good here and here's one that I didn't give myself a great score on and here's why. Shouldn't take long, probably 30 seconds tops. I'm gonna give you all a minute. Turn to someone next to you right now and just tell them your score. Make them listen. <laughs> about 10 more seconds let the other person talk all right 20 more seconds I love how we have, if you ever have two guys together, they're always the first ones to finish. It's like, hey, I'm good. You're good? Yep. <laughs> but you put three ladies together. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one. What was that like? Awesome. Okay, so what was awesome about it? Oh, well, what I learned that she was in the seamstress business. Okay. <laughs> so we had a connection. You had a connection. Awesome. She does great work. I've seen it before. And just venting about her, just, I mean, venting to her, just about um, some things I could work on, my, work on myself. And actually hearing myself say, like, oh, I'm not good at this, kind of wakes me up. I'm like, oh, maybe I should get better at this. Somebody else, what was that like? What was that exercise like? I see a lot of smiles. I saw like some fist bumps going in the back. <laughs> yeah. And Marissa's over here like, don't you, don't, don't you dare shut us down. Like, what do what'd you think? Self-realization for me. Self-realization. see something about yourself prior to this. I probably see now. That's good. What was it, what was harder? Picking uh, a topic or picking a score? Score. What was that like giving yourself a score? Hard. Hard. I wanted to lie to myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's an <that> inner struggle. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, what was it like putting a score to that? Because it's one thing to say, hey, I'm not great at something or I'm great at something, but then when we go to put a score to it, what happens? It does. It does. It's a temptation to put a score where you'd like to be rather than where you are. Yes. You know, I, I forgot to give you this instruction. If you're, if you're in doubt, round down. 
And here's why. This, as great as this is, this tool is still incomplete. Who do you think has the other, there's more numbers going here. Who do you think has the other numbers that go to this? The people in your life. The people in your life. So let me tell you how this can be so incredibly effective. You know, um, so my wife Kim and I, um, you know, I came to her one day and I said, hey baby, I, I graded myself on how I think I'm doing as a husband. Right? And so this is not for the faint of heart, but one of my challenges, any, who in here is married, by the way? Raise your hand, please. Yes, this isn't witness protection. Um, <laughs> one of these challenges you can do with your spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, or just anyone in your life who you really trust to give you an honest opinion, which my spouse is the most brutally honest person, too brutally honest for me, actually, but very honest, is to ask them, hey, I gave myself a score on our relationship before I tell you what I score myself, I want to know what, do you, what would you score me, right? And tell them to be honest. So I asked my wife, um, you know, how would you score me? Now, let me tell you, um, Wednesday night, I would have been a one yeah. right here. We had a date night, and it was a train wreck because I made it all about me, quite honestly. Uh, she wanted to sit and talk, and my idea of a great evening was dinner and a movie, you know, because that's how I own wine. Come on, let's go see James Bond. Um, it was a long ride home, uh, lots of tears, lots of anger, lots of talking through. She let me. She said, if this were a date, there would not be a second date. She let me take her to lunch the next day, and then we did a surprise party thing for her last night. So that's like, I'm back up to like, superstar right here <laughs> and let me tell you it took a lot of doing though a lot of doing and she was very very gracious but one thing i, I remember asking is one time is uh, baby what score would you give me and she said a six i said okay i'll take that you know i thought it was gonna be lower i'm like what would it take for me to get to a seven right so don't shoot for the moon if they give you a three don't say hey what would a 10 look like you ain't getting there today pick the next number up you know what she told me it blew my mind it blew my mind she said, you know what, every once in a while, if you would watch the kids while I went and got my nails done, that would bump you up to a seven. I'm like, so 30 bucks and an hour would get me all the way up to there? I mean, that's the best investment of time there is. And here's why it blew me away. She hates to spend money. I cannot force her to spend money on herself. I would never have guessed that what would fill her, what would make her feel valued, had anything to do with that. But because I created the space for a conversation with a tool like this, it happened. And our relationship got better until the next day. Uh, but <laughs> do you see how this can be such a powerful tool? I'll tell you one more example, and then, and then I'll, I'll, I want to move on. We had a workshop with, um, we do a lot of work with oil field companies because Lafayette is so oil field dependent. Actually, we're not doing a lot of work with oil field companies right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of those guys, it's a very old school style of leadership. And uh, one of these really tough guys came up to us one day, and uh, we had given them the challenge to go home that night and use this one with one of their family. And he gave me permission to use his story, but the area he marked down the lowest was his son. He gave them a two. And he went home that night. He said, say, son, today I graded myself on how we're doing. And he's like, I wanted to hear from you on a scale of one to ten. And his son said a one. And he said, so there was this awkwardness where he just like um, – he didn't know what to say, and it sounds like, I'm sorry, you know, but, like, that's, that's where we're at, and I, I really don't see anything changing. So he went to bed that night with a heavy heart. Well, about 11 o'clock that night, he gets a text from his son, and he showed it to us the next day, and he said, Dad, I'm sorry. He's like, thank you so much for having that conversation with me today. I really hope and believe one day we can be our 9 or a 10, and that's what I want. And in tears of his eyes, I mean, tough guy, these kids, you know, they just like, I never would have known how to have that conversation with him had it not been for this tool. Simple tool, guys. And really all it is is 1 to 10 scale, right? But, and you could say, oh, that's subjective. You know what? This is life. This is life. It's real. And so I challenge you with your employees. Hey, what's it like working for me on a scale of 1 to 10? What's it like being my employee? What's it like being my kid? What's it like being a volunteer for me? What's it like being my friend? It can be powerful. So here's what I want you to do. Before we move on to the next session, I want you to write down what's the one thing 
that you need to do next as a result of what we just talked about here. One thing, and be very specific, because you're going to tell the person next to you. <laughs> so the one thing, so as you think about this, right, uh, let, maybe let's make it even more specific. What's the, what's the very next conversation you need to have based on this? As you look at this, what's a conversation that you could have with this tool? Who does it need to be with? Right? So think about that. Who does it need to be with? It might be that employee that, um, that is at risk. It might be someone that you love really closely. It might be whoever. You know. I know what you do. You tried to shove their name down really fast when it came to your brain, maybe. But it's there. It already came up. It's too late. So write it down. What's that next name? And now I want you to take about 20 seconds and just turn to the person and tell them what your one thing is that you're going to do next coming out of this exercise. 20 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds. Go ahead. Hurry up. Confession is good for the soul. See, y'all didn't even have to go to church. All right, so that's heart, guys. This is about living without regrets. It's about living a life where you can say, you know, no one can point a finger at you and say, you wronged me and you never tried to make it right. It's a life w w worth living. Now I want us to move on to smarts. And what do I mean by that? Now, why do we say smart? Some of you are like the grammar police, and you're like, that's just not right. Um, so this isn't about just intelligence, right? There's a lot of that out there. But this also embodies the other types of smarts, which is um, street smarts, right? Have you ever known someone who they were really intelligent but would get killed like in five minutes if they walked out the door? Like no street smarts, no common sense, right, at all. They're just like, I mean, Einstein left his keys behind all the time, which I always – try to convince myself I'm a genius whenever I can't find anything that I don't think it, it works that way. But it's, this is about intelligence, but it's also about street smarts, common sense. It's also about emotional intelligence. Have you ever known someone who was just brilliant at what they did, but borderline Asperger's when it came to working with people? And you're like, tell me you did not send that email. Tell me you did not have that conversation with that person. You did not tell your wife. You should have heard, I had a workshop yesterday where I told them about my date night and what I did, and all the women were just like, mm. I'm like, yes, I live in the future too. You know, I'm right here. I know, I know. Live and learn. So emotional intelligence. I teach this, and I didn't pick up the signs that when she said, sure, I'd love to go to a, a movie, that meant <laughs> last chance <laughs> to get it right. Totally missed it. Emotional intelligence, right, is knowing what people are really saying. I'll give you a little clue. Oftentimes, if not always, what people say is the problem is almost never the problem. It's always about something else. And it usually comes down to either a conversation that didn't happen or didn't happen well. It always comes back to that. It's, it's this connection piece, right? When people have trust in each other, I mean, just things move smoothly. So smarts. You know, being smart is uh is knowing what to say yes to and what to say no to uh, who has kids in here anybody anybody with young kids or grandkids right if they get a hold of your phone and then hand it back to you and you notice suddenly the battery just drains like in one hour what happened why did your battery from your phone why did your iphone die in one hour flat after 
that small child played with it? Anybody know? They the What's that? They downloaded the game. They downloaded game. Yeah, that very well could be. Streaming video. Streaming video. Uh, have any of you noticed that you can double tap? This is the iPhone, so if you're not an iPhone user, sorry, but uh, you can double tap your iPhone and it'll bring up all the screens that are open at one time. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens if your three year old opens up 40 apps all at once? What happens to your battery life? Guess what? We're no different. A lot of us, we try to go through life just from one thing to the next, one thing to the next, without realizing the importance of endings, of being able to say no. We are horrible, most of us, at saying no. And the reason is because if you're um, the kind of person that I think you are, you're, you're here and, and you have all these ideas and talents, it's, there's something alluring about people coming to you. and they. They want you. They, they, they want to use you. They want you to talk to them. They want to your ideas and all these things. And so we say yes, yes, yes. And they're good things. That's the other thing. So many of those opportunities, so many of these things that we can do, they're good. But guys, we've got to learn to say no because what happens is it drains us. It drains the life slowly out of us. So this next section, what I want you to do is I want you to pick another area on your, your heart over here. And I want you to pick an area that, say, um, let's just say that you'd like to see that number go up, right? And here's what we're going to do. If, if we're going to be smart about this, we've got to look at a couple of things. At, the, at its base, it's what do we say yes to, what do we say no to, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I, wanna, I want you to write down what's one thing you need to keep doing in that area. So an example for me with, me, with my wife is I need to keep um, creating opportunities to listen to her. Her love language is quality time. <laughs> like she just wants me to sit on the couch next to her and, and let her talk. Um, I would rather clean the entire house, <laughs> like paint, redecorate everything, than sit down and talk. I, all I, just things are piling up in my head to do. But guess what? I can't tell you how many times I have cleaned the house, vacuumed it, I mean, changed out the lights, and found my wife sobbing on the couch saying, you don't love me, because I didn't do what she needed. So there's some things I know, like, all right, I want my score to go up with her, but there's some things I'm going to keep doing, right? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. She's told me these are good. I'm going to keep sending her out to get her nails done, right? Um, I'm going to keep bringing her out on dates where I listen and she talks. The other part of this, though, is I want you to think over here, what do you need to stop doing? What do you need to stop doing in that area? So I'll use myself as an example, easy target. With my wife, we've been going through a lot lately, and I don't handle tension well. I just want to fix it. It's a guy thing, I think. And so for me, I'm going to stop trying to fix her. Ladies, do you want to be, do you want solutions when you come to talk to someone necessarily? Do you want them to fix your problem? That's it. Anybody seen the video, it's not about the nail? Did anybody see that? Where yeah. it's, worth, it's worth a thing. Um, sorry. Diversion. So I, I need to stop trying to fix it. What is it you need to stop doing in that area? And then here's the other thing. What do you need to maybe start doing? What do you need to start doing? So for Kim and I, we've got to start having a regular date night again. We got really busy in the last two or three months. We were very spotty. She reminded me that that horrible date that we did have was all the more horrible because it was the first one we'd had in a long time. Um, and we were doing it every week at one point. And I don't know what happened, but guess what? <laughs> you reap what you sow. So I've got to start being really intentional about scheduling weekly dates. And then finally, this last one is I want you to think about what needs to change. So. This might be something you're already doing, but you just you realize you need to tweak it a little bit. You need to change it a little bit. <clears throat> so 
So again, if I use Kim as example, change. See, I'm having to think about this too. You know, for me, I, I think sometimes when I do, when, when we do have those little date nights, I, I put a lot of pressure on her to come up with the topics. I'm like, all right, we're here. I'm listening. Go. And uh, I, need to, I need to change. I need to meet her there. I need to bring some things that we can talk about, even be intentional about it. I mean, imagine that. So as you look at those four, <clears throat> I want you to pick again the one thing and write it down at the bottom of your page. Of those four things, what's the one? If you only could do one, if you only could do one, which do you think would be the most effective in getting you to a higher score over here? If you could only do one. Write it down, and then I'm going to give you another 30 seconds to to share that. So think about it, write it down, and get with your partner. And I want to share what's the one thing out of these four that you wrote down, what's the one that you think would be most effective? And go. Francis, how many times have we been in the last five minutes? About All right. Time's up. I hope this leaves y'all wanting to talk more. You know, that's a good sign. So I, I'm sorry to rip you from it because we are going to keep moving through. But this is to give you a taste of what can be and, and then something you can pursue further. You can, uh, you can hire you a coach in this room. Just grab some mind and say, you're my coach now. I want you to ask me about this tomorrow, the next day, the day after that. Any person can be your coach. So what was this like? What was it like going through this exercise? Nice reflection. Kind of really doing a self-assessment. Say more about that. What, what did you see that, that made you feel like it was a nice reflection? Well, I mean, just taking the time out breaks on life and just really kind of looking within and yes. trying to be pretty um, a good judge, uh, you know, not, uh, yeah, a judge of your behavior, your character, and looking at, okay, I did this well, but yeah, I can really improve in this area. In discussing it with her, I found that she knew all of that yes. already, <laughs> but now she had the opportunity to write it down, and you made her reflect on Oh, that's great. That's great. And, and, and I love what you said is it made you kind of take the time, right? Yeah. 
because there's something about what would happen to a car if we drove it 300,000 miles without ever changing the oil, without ever bringing it in to get serviced. It wouldn't last long, right? But yet we do that with our own lives. We go through life and we help everybody else, but we never take time to look and see how are we doing, right? Who am I becoming? Do I like the person I'm becoming? You know, do other people like the person I'm becoming? <laughs> yeah. Are they like, yeah, you're, you're no fun to be around anymore. So that's, that's great. Um, so write down your one thing. And uh, we'll move, we're going to move on to this next session it's called grit. So what is grit? What do you think? What, what comes up for you when you think of the word grit? Determination. John Wayne, True Grit. Great movie. Recently redone. What's that? Perseverance. Perseverance, yes. I love it. Someone else. What, what comes up with grit? Determination. Determination. You know, it's interesting. There's, uh, I love, again, I love stories and movies. And, you know, there's some movies where the hero walks through adversity without a scratch. And I really have a hard time getting into those because it's just not believable. My kind of heroes are like, you know, I always loved the Indiana Jones movies growing up um, because Indiana Jones just got beat up all the time. I mean, he was, he played hurt the whole time. One of the most iconic scenes in Indiana Jones, uh, the first movie, was where a guy comes out with a sword and does all this sword play, and Indiana Jones just pulls out his gun and shoots him. You know, like he's just exhausted and tired. The funny backstory to that is that day Harrison Ford showed up, he had the flu, and he was supposed to do all this whip stuff, and instead he just pulled out his gun. <laughs> and they liked it so much they kept it. And it resonated with people because don't we all have those days where here comes that thing, that problem, and it's just like, and we're just like, I'm done. I'm done. But the thing I love about them is they couldn't stop him. That grit. Grit is where you get knocked down and you get up again. Mm-hmm. You get knocked down and you get up again. And one of our uh, requirements to be a coach with Relevant Coaching is you have to have suffered. You have had to have experienced loss of some kind. Because if you haven't, you haven't lived enough life yet for our clients to feel safe with you. If someone find, you know, if, and it's the reason why a lot of our coaches aren't younger because you have still got some life to live. And before people can feel safe with you, they have to know that um, you've, you've been through it and come out the other side. Otherwise, they're sharing all these things with you but weren't like, you have no idea, right? You haven't had kids yet? Man, look, it's coming, right? Haven't got married, that's, you know, that's another thing a job, lost a job, had the death of a dream, a vision. All those things require grit to, to keep moving. And it's important to life. Scientists at Berkeley, they took an amoeba and they put it in the absolute perfect setting. Perfect lighting, perfect amount of food, perfect air environment. You know what happened to it? It died. And what they found is too much comfort can be lethal. We're hardwired for challenge. If we don't feel challenged, we die. You, you think about people as they get older. Why do you think it is that the second someone breaks a hip or a leg, their health declines so quickly? Why do you think that is? And, and as a result, what are they not able to do? They're not able to do the things that they challenge themselves with. I can't tell you how many people I know that who were riding bikes, running, maybe pl- playing things, and when they got hurt and couldn't do those things anymore, they couldn't be challenged. That's when their health just really went off the deep end. It had far more to do with than just their hips. So here's what I want to ask you. I want you to think in terms of what you do today, either as a student or your job. So we're going to shift a little bit from the relationships, and I want you to put yourself on this scale. So up here is going to be, don't, don't put your mark yet because I'm going to explain it. But let's say this middle section. This middle section is going to be appropriately challenged. And let me, let me describe for you appropriately challenged. Appropriately challenged means uh, you get up in the morning, you have a to-do list, you go to work and get most of it done. You have a sense of finality and satisfaction at the end of the day. You go home and you can be normal with your family or friends, whatever that means, right? That's appropriately challenged. Or maybe you're under-challenged, down here at the bottom. Under-challenged, 
You don't have a very long to-do list. At work, you shop on the internet and do crossword puzzles. <laughs> or Candy Crush. You watch the clock and can't wait to go home. You don't feel all that fulfilled about what you got done. And then there's this, dangerously over-challenged. Here, you get up in the morning, you look at your to-do list and think, there is no way. No way I'm getting it all done. You get to work and instead of it getting smaller, what does the list get? Longer. You work past closing time, on the way home you have a pulsating headache, you're not present with your family very often because you've got so much going on in your mind about work. So you get the gist of it? <laughs> so now, I want you to pull a line. Where are you currently on this, on this thing? Make your mark. Overall, What's that? Overall or? You know, that's a great, I, I want to say in terms of um, work right now, what you do. So this is your job. We'll go there. That's a great question. You could use this for other contexts as well. Let's just say your job. So we're, we're at innovate. Let's go one step. So let's say as a as an innovator and a leader, you know, within what you do, put yourself in here. How how where do you feel you're up here as a as a leader as an innovator in terms of what you do? That could be a place to go. I probably just confused you, but it's all right. So everybody got that that markdown. All right. So we're not going to have a chance to show it to everybody, but I want to want to ask you this. Where do you think the most growth happens on this, on this chart? Where does growth happen? So let me, let me ask you this. How many people, how many people, let's, let's, moment of honesty. How many people put yourself in under-challenged? Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. How many put yourself here in appropriately challenged? Raise your hand. How many put yourself in dangerously over-challenged? Put okay. at the bottom the bottom of it. <laughs> so here, here, here's what I want you to see. This is where growth happens, right here. And here's why. You know, think about it from the, the standpoint of a, you know, a, a knee. I blew out my knee last year, and when I couldn't do anything with it, what happens to a muscle that does nothing? It atrophies, right? Right here, you have someone who just jogs three miles a day. That's great, but what's happening to your body over time? It gets accustomed to that level. Well, science shows the law of thermodynamics. Everything's in a constant state of decay. So you can rot, jog three miles a day, but you're not growing. You're not even holding steady. You're actually still continuing to, to degrade. Over here, this is where you can also have a blowout and breakdown. You can't stay here long. But a personal trainer is someone that pushes you just past what's comfortable because they know that's where growth happens. That's what causes your body to grow. You don't stay there, but you have to spend time there on a regular basis, and if you don't, you're not going to grow. You're not gonna grow. So here's the question for this. What's the one thing, right down the bottom, you need to do next to either get closer to this, or if you're up here, there might be some things you need to say no to. So what, what do you need to say yes to in order to get closer to here? If you're way up here and you're redlining, what do you think that need to say no to to get back down here? So go ahead and write that down. I need to get my, uh, my phone. Thing I wanted to share with you guys about grit. One way you can grow grit is by studying people who had it and learning more about them. And uh, doggone it. See all the apps I'm having to close out <laughs> to get where I want to go. You've been letting a three-year-old I have my little girl. I'm not going to blame it on her. Um, <clears throat> so let's do this. 
I want to read you someone who had grit, and then we're going to close out with this last one. This person at age seven, their family was forced out of their home and had to go to work. At age nine, mother dies. At age 20, lost her job as a store clerk when the business failed. At age 23, ran for state legislature, finished eighth out of 13 candidates. At age 24, got a jo job at the post office, had the worst efficiency record in the country for delivering mail. At age 26, business partner died, leaving them with huge debt and another failing business. At age 26, their girlfriend died. At age 27, suffered a nervous breakdown. At age 28, they were turned down in their first marriage proposal. At age 29, ran for Illinois Speaker of the House, lost. At age 34, ran for Congress, lost. At age 37, elected to Congress on the third try. On age 39, is not re-elected to Congress. At age 45, runs for Senate, lost. At age 47, runs for Vice President, loses. At age 49, runs for Senate again, loses again. You get a sense that this person's a glutton for punishment? Mm -hmm. At age 51, elected president, the Civil War starts one month later and ends five days before his death. Abraham Lincoln, at age 54, this is funny, delivered the Gettysburg Address, not received well. Audience and organizers deemed it a failure. The Chicago Times called it silly, flat, and dishwatery. Abraham Lincoln had grit. He had the ability to move forward. It's so important. So make sure you put yourself in a position to stay challenged. I want to end with this last one, grace. You know, what does this mean? And in a nutshell, grace is all about, guys, we got here on the shoulders of other people. People poured into me. The only reason I'm here today in front of you is because people loved on me and challenged me and coached me up. And so part of grace is realizing to whom much has been given, much is, is expected. And it's about giving back. But let me tell you something. You can't give back if you don't take care of yourself and your own energy levels. And so I want you on the le realize this is your energy tank. You have drains and fills. On the left side, I want you to write what are some of the things that fill you. And just shout them out. What are some things that fill your tank energy-wise every day? I mean, exercise is one for me. What, what comes up? Fashion. Fashion. What else? Yell them out. What's that? That energize you. So at the end of a long day or on the weekend, what do you do to fill your tank? Travel. Travel. Family. What else? Read. What's that? Read. What else? Laughing. Laughing. What else? Nature. What else? Music. Music. One more. Uh, writing. Writing. All right. So we get this. These things fill us, right? But then there are these things over here. I call them drains. What are the things that drain you? Just drain the life out of you every day. Conflict. Conflict. Drama. Drama. What else? Negative people. Ah, I just put mean people. <laughs> That's one of my drains. What else? Kids. Kids. Yes, they can be a fill and a drain. I'll put family up here. They can be that way too. What else? School. School. How about traffic? Especially Lafayette traffic, right? What else? Finances. Finances. What else? Work. Work. All right. So here's what I want to show you. We get this instinctively, right? We know this. Fills and drains, but here's, here's what should be happening. When, when these start to pile up and this drain gets larger and larger, right? You've got this fill and you've got this drain and it's getting large. As these start to drop, when you hit this level, you're gonna feel anxiety. There should be alarms going off everywhere. Have you been there where you just feel like something's not quite right and you get anxious? If you don't address this drain, you're gonna hit this next level, which is emotional breakdown. That's where you're like, the next person that talks to me, I will probably punch in the face. And it'll be over something small. You've been there? Where you just know it's close. Guys, if we don't address that, the last stage is nervous breakdown. And that is where your body shuts down. If you don't eat, eventually your body shuts down. If you don't sleep, eventually your body shuts down. If you don't feed your mind, if you don't take care of your energy, you're, you will shut down. But here's the kicker. When these drains start to pile up, what tends to happen over here? We do more or less of these. Less. less. 
Guys, we've essentially shut off the faucet with this wide open, and it's called suicide. Protect your fills and drains. You're no good to anyone as a leader, as a, as a mother, father, friend, unless you take care of yourself. With that, you know, write down your one thing. What's the one thing that you realize I need to be intentional about making sure my fills are met? Sometimes the best thing you could do as a leader is take the day off. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you could do on a Sunday is take a nap instead of going to church. Sometimes it means making sure you're doing these. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you for the honor of speaking to you today. We're, we are done. You've been so... Uh, You've been a great group, so...